Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Gypsy Lee. I'm Matt Gerber, and we are Scarlet and Harmony. For fans of bands like Thy Order's Murder, Infinite Annihilator, Lorna Shore, Fit for an Autopsy, please feel free to check us out at Scarlet and Harmony on YouTube, Spotify, and anywhere else you may stream music. We'd really appreciate it. Hope you enjoy. My goodness, Mike Martin, my Russell Brown's in the building! Hell yeah! Yes! Hello, hello, hello. Dude, thank Hi. you so, so much for doing this. We really appreciate it. Let me mute the sounds real quick. For those who've been living under a rock their entire life and may not know who you are, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now. Plug or promote anything you'd like. Um, I am Michael Rickshaw Martin. Uh, I used to play in a band called I Wrestled a Bear Once. I live in the Austin area of Texas. Um, I am in my man cave. I am drinking an energy drink and a beer at the same time. Atta boy. <laughs> uh and you want me to plug everything now like right yeah, sure we'll, we'll do it twice oh. we'll do it we'll do it in the beginning and in the end double plug okay uh so in my years since i wrestled a bear once uh i have a podcast called nerding out with rickshaw it is on youtube it's on spotify uh we've been doing a lot of different things over there and then I have recently started uh, a new band that has an EP, but we're working on some new songs, uh, and it's called Phantom Figures. And uh, I've been doing the vocals in that band. So so that's pretty much what I've been doing. Uh, I'm married. I've been doing the married life. I And then I'm trying to do some music and trying to do the, you know, the podcast life. No, no kiddos fun. yet in the married life? No kids, but we got some dogs, you know, dogs are, nice. dogs are enough. You know yeah. what I mean? Even, even dogs could be trouble. So I can only imagine, you know, how much trouble it is. Uh, my, my wife has a kid and she's around 10 and she's, uh, or she is 10. She, and she's a lot of trouble. So there are times where she, my wife is just like, nah, I don't know if I want to do that. And then me being someone who's just like, yeah, I still like doing music and stuff like that in my free time. I'm also like, yeah, if you don't want to have a kid, I'm totally down with not having a kid. So, <laughs> what's your what's your most prized possession in in the man cave? Oh, my. so in the man cave, uh, I mean, I'm addicted to action figures. So there's probably there's like a couple that I have like tucked away in a box because i'm afraid of anything ever harming them um the special ones some some like old school marvel legends like the first run of them that were like a toys r us exclusive uh they're and they're all x-men characters that's probably like my favorite set of marvel legends but then i have my comic book collection out here too so there's a couple of like my key issue of the first appearance of Deadpool, a new mutants comic. Uh, that's, that's probably one of my prized possessions. Uh, I have some, I have some others too, like first appearance of the black symbiote, uh, you know, venom in the Spider-Man comic. Hey, you know uh, your stuff. I have, yeah. I have some, I have some stuff going on with, you know, I I've actually, I had my, whenever I was in, I wrestled a bear once I had my whole comic book, collection stolen from me so now that i've had to like rebuy some of them it's like it means twice as much to me so keep them keep them blocked in a safe this time <laughs> oh yeah dude they they we had a tour <laughs> it, no we were on a tour and then we had one day at home when we lived in birmingham alabama and we were gonna pack we were gonna go home sleep pack and then pack everything else we needed to go on warp tour and when we got home, our front door was open, and then we found out all of our shit had been stolen. Like, and they took their time too. Like, they were like flipping drawers, like pulling out couch cushions. Like, the whole house was trashed. I remember Krista was like, Krista started crying because they like trashed some of her like paintings that she did. Oh so my gosh, that's terrible. It was a dark time, dark time. Do but... you still have <laughs> communication with Krista? 
Uh, I chat with Krista every now and then. I honestly, I've I talk to everyone that has been in the band with me every now and then. Maybe not as much as others, but I definitely try to stay in touch. Some of uh, some of the you know the ex members are they're like you know pretty complicated people so it's like sometimes they won't get back to me but then randomly out of the blue they'll like shoot me a text and then chat me up all day and then disappear forever so <laughs> got you <laughs> yeah. oh my yeah, yeah. my uh my co-host today is jb jb music 661 jb this is mike do you have a question for mike while i uh, look up something that a particular fan of yours mike wants me to show you real quick i'm gonna pull up okay. that picture Hey, Mike. Just uh, It's a pleasure to meet you. My question to you hey. is, um, when you were growing up, what was your first like musical project, whether it be an instrument or what you started first with? That is a great question. Uh, <laughs> so actually, I grew up in uh, central Kansas, and it was it was a honestly in hindsight like i'm glad that i grew, i grew up there because it like made me who i am you know that's i mean that's the thing a lot of people say about you know their shithole town that they grew up in hey it made me 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 but at the same time like there's a lot of meth in kansas there's a lot of like shitty things going on there's a lot of like terrible people there's a lot of rednecks stuff like that but when i grew up in kansas and i remember i started playing saxophone when I was in fifth grade, uh, they actually said, my band teacher was like, hey, you, you have the coordination, uh, like hand-eye coordination, feet, arms, whatever. You could be a drummer if you want. And my parents were like, no, you're not being a drummer. Like that, you know, oh, it's going to be loud. It's going to be, you're going to be banging That's around. what my mom <laughs> said. I swear to God, same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so then same. they're like, what, what else would you play? You know, like, and well, they're like, well, also, you know, it seems like you are good with you know woodwinds like you have the because they give you like mouthpieces and they they see if you could blow through them and stuff like that and they just kind of like test all your stuff and they were like you could also play saxophone if you wanted or any woodwinds and my brother was playing saxophone, saxophone at the time so i was just like yo i'll play saxophone and then i was second chair like all the way through high school because one of my good friends was first chair and he was like this saxophone prodigy dude who would just shred up, you know, and he, he would like improv and just be like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like, and so I was like, Hey, I like being good, but like, fuck that guy. He's always going <laughs> to be first chair. So, so I always, I was, you know, saxophone that whole time. And every person I knew wanted to play guitar and like wanted to start a band, but like no one, knew the concept of tuning their instrument at the time and i remember just being like why does why can't why does no one figure out how to play a fucking guitar you know like what the hell and then my friend justin brock uh who actually me and him wrote the first phantom figures uh ep together but he learned how to play guitar and then i ended up moving to texas and then he ended up moving to texas with me and then pretty much they were like, I wanted to be a vocalist at the time. I was like very Chino influenced, you know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> when I, when I, whenever I moved to Texas, they were, I met some friends that were like, hey, you're going to join our band, but you're going to play bass. And then we're also going to take the guitarist that lives with you also. And we're all going to start a band together. And then I was like, okay, I guess I'm playing bass. And then at the same time, one of my roommates that had a bass fucked me over on rent for like two months and he was like how about i just give you the bass and in my, and my practice cab and i was like okay i guess i'm permanently bass playing right now so i pretty much went from that playing in you know local bands the first i think the first band we started it was it was called divine bloodshed and metal, then metal we, for sure yeah metal for sure then we started getting into like that emo phase of you know metal and we changed the name to because of her so, and then and then we changed it to surrounded by monsters and then that's whenever we met the people that were in i wrestled a bear once and they had a band called statues cry bleeding and then after they started i wrestled a bear once their bass player got caught with weed in louisiana and got put on like seven years of probation and couldn't leave the state what so the f 
<laughs> yeah. Seven years for yeah. some weed? Yeah. <laughs> hey, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> That's Dude, crazy. Seriously. And it was like the type of thing where I was like, I just remember like, you know, he was wait he was waiting for his court date. And he knew that he was probably gonna get on probation and he, but he was in denial about it because he was like, I'll teach you all the riffs, but like I think I'll be good. And then he's like teaching me and like and then at one point he's like, you know what? Yeah. I found out I'm not going to be able to make it on this next tour. And I was like, all right, well, thanks for teaching me. So then, the so then you, <laughs> you hop in and then uh -huh. the rest is history for the next like eight or nine years. Right. Uh, well it was technically six years of me being in the band because in 2000, uh, let me think in 2008, I did a tour with them and I was playing bass. But then after that tour, I was like, I was like, Hey, you need to tell me, if I'm permanently in the band, you know what I mean? Because like I got plans with surrounded by monsters at that time. Like I have plans with them. We're doing some DIY touring and like we had a EP coming out and shit like that. And after that tour, I was like, okay, well you're going to have to give me more than just like a week's notice or else I'm not going to do it. And so the next tour was like coming up, coming up. And I finally said to myself, no, nope, I'm not going to do it. And then Steven hit me up. Four, it was like five days before the tour or something like that. And he's like, so you still want to do this tour or what? And I was like, I fucking told you exactly <laughs> like what was going to happen. I was like, you have to fucking tell me in advance or I'm not doing it. And he's like, oh, really? You're just going to fucking do that? And I was like, yeah, I can't just ditch the friends I have in this band like last minute. So so that's whenever I I said no. And then exactly a year later, me, my uh, me and my friends in Surrounded by Monsters did like all of these Texas dates with I Wrestled a Bear once. And like they had a guy named Dave playing bass for him. And I thought everything was all good. And at the very end of the tour, we were like drinking and they were like, hey, what are the chances you'd come play bass for us again? Because we really aren't liking our bass player. And I was like, well, shit, man. Like the next tour is in like what, a couple months? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, we have all the time in the world, man. If you want me to be in the band, let's do it. And they were like, yeah, let's do it. So I like that same week, I swear, I like quit my job and like moved in with them in Shreveport and like got my own room and like it had a band house and everything. So hell yeah. I, I don't want to forget this, uh, that uh, my buddy Mac, my really good friend Mac, uh, he goes by Mac Attack. He right. wants me to show you this. He owns this nice. and he nice. says it's his holy grail. Uh, I wrestled. Uh, merch item i guess you'll say yeah do you no, rec go ahead go ahead go ahead i was gonna say do you recall putting together that movie can, can you talk about that experience so that is like one of those things like okay so i don't i don't look at myself as like a fucking i don't fucking brag i don't i'm not like fucking cheesing everyone up like hey i fucking toured the world hey you better watch you talk to you i fucking toured you know i was in a big band but like the thing, the one thing that I want to brag about is that movie. I want to be like, yeah, I was in a movie. Like, yeah, we were in a <laughs> movie one time. Like, oh, Sean from Slipknot was in the movie. Oh, yeah. But it's like when people bring it up, I'm like, oh, yeah, let's talk about this. this <laughs> <is> bullshit. <laughs> but that was probably the fucking coolest thing that I've ever done. Like, and And it was the type of thing, too, where like me and Justin Beasley, the director, like he, he obviously like whenever you grow up directing videos and you want to do a movie and that ch chance comes along, he was like into it. He's like putting his own money into it. He's putting all, all the time into it. They were, we were pushing like 15 plus hours sometimes like when we were filming and I was there for like all of it. And I was like, and he would like pull me off to the side and be like, Hey, thanks for staying like all 15 hours. And like, joking with all the people on set because they're all like super aggravated and like overworked and i'd be like yeah man i'm just trying to like drink some beers and like smoke some weed and have fun and he's like well thank you because some of those people like really wanted to quit but you were like such like cool to them so they were just like fuck it we will stay you know so but yeah also also on my youtube if you go check it out it used to be called um used to be called Worship and Tribute Nerd, but, you know, like I said, I changed the name to uh, Nerding Out with Rickshaw, but we reviewed 
our own movie at one point and I, i'm pretty sure krista was there and uh john was there but we'd go through like we go through the movie we do highlights and it's just it was such a good time to relive those moments i get spoiler alert i get my dick bit off in that movie it's pretty fun what? yeah <laughs> hey yo what <laughs> go ahead ouch no he was just saying he was just doing the the sound effect also oh yeah 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 it's yeah, that was that was a good time, and I to this day want to do another movie. But you know, whenever you're not in a popular band anymore, it's hard to come by. So, is there is there ever talks of of getting most of the lineup back together? Like, does Krista ever express interest in in doing like a some form of small run reunion show? So I'm gonna be okay. So I'm gonna be super transparent about this, like. You know, I've I've went through all my beef with, you know, Steven. That was like the main beef that broke the band up. But being super transparent about it is like, OK, so like, let's just say if we did do some sort of reunion, it would be who who would you think would be in the band as the vocalist? Well, Krista, not Courtney. OK, right. Krista. OK, so being just super transparent about that, it's like. Krista and Steven were dating whenever the band first started going. So they were dating up until when I joined the band, they were still dating, you know, writing tunes, ripping fucking tracks in the bedroom and shit like that. Um, so up until about 2010 and then she kind of like comes out with it one day. I think it was the end of 2010 going into 2011, maybe the beginning of 2011. She's like, hey, just to let you know, we're not dating anymore. And every, and she kind of dropped the bomb on everybody. And she's like, he might try and pretend like we still are. And then, you know, there were times too where she was like, and then at the same time, they would like wander off together and she'd be like, we got drunk and we fucked. <laughs> and so and so so all of us were just like okay well you know mom and dad are fighting but like maybe they they're sleeping in the in different rooms but they still get together every now and then so we were like okay well as long as they're cool then you know the band can still exist and then it got even darker and to a point where like they weren't like doing that they weren't like sneaking so that's kind of what initially yeah. caused her to leave it eventually was, was because yes. of steven <clears throat> so eventually she was like yo i'm fucking sick of steven kind of gaslighting me and then gaslighting the whole band and like there were times like i said there were times where she was like hey don't let him fool you we're not even dating anymore and so so like we would be like oh shit that's crazy because he was just saying that y'all are still together and stuff. And she's like, okay, well, yeah, that this is the, you know, this is the beginning of you guys need to understand that he kind of gaslights everybody to control the situation. And, you know, it just kept going from there. So eventually they were split up. She didn't live with the band anymore. And then she got pregnant with the other guy. So then that's, and we were on warp tour. And so whenever she figured that out, I was going to say was that. like, yeah, I, the only time like, I've ever saw you guys live, she was like three or four months pregnant and it was at Warp Tour. Right. So she was like, she's like, nah, we're, I'm not doing this shit anymore. So that's where it ended. So then, so then after that, how do you find Courtney? And can you, can you go off of, can you rattle off maybe some almost became vocalists? Like, is there any other artists that we may know that you considered? And then how did you come to to decide that Courtney was the perfect fit? So, okay. So here, so whenever like, okay, we were, we put out, uh, let me think. We put out Ruining It For Everybody. And I remember Courtney being like, just sent us a friendly email. And it was like, hey, just want to let you guys know that like, it's awesome to see y'all doing your thing because you guys are just like super weird. You're being yourself and like there's a girl vocalist and Courtney was like, that's like everything my band is. Like we just want to be ourselves. 
we just want to write weird shit and you know and she's like i'm a girl vocalist so it like gives so she like kind of initially says like it gives me courage to do my own thing you know seeing i wrestled browns do their thing and so after that you know like krista was like oh yeah let me let me write her back and let's be cool and then eventually other people in the band kind of just like friend like friended her up like on on facebook and or maybe maybe it was myspace i don't know facebook or something but like we just knew of her and would say hi every now and then just to be like you know friendly and she would be like you know hey heard the new songs cool keep ripping and so we knew who she was and then we would listen to her old band unicron we, and we just kind of jam her shit in the van every now and then so we knew who she was but then whenever we whenever krista quit we were like very desperate at the time and so in the middle of warp tour whenever we were like well i guess we need a new vocalist we were just like who should we get brainstorming all night because she she like, was feeding the bands right like that was one of her side things at first in between playing with with uh her band she would also i think i'd read that she would uh like feed the bands you know how they have like uh you know what i'm talking about for warp tour oh oh yeah, yeah i know what you're talking about like the catering uh right 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 i i had, that... I had heard that she also did like the catering for the bands also um if so that was like after she had already joined up um because they gave they give you the option uh on warp tour like to d do things like that to just kind of like like hey kevin lyman would be like yo if you want to like help out serve people all their lunch today you know then it's like cool points with kevin lyman and he would just try to hook you up with like better spots better better times for the day or things like that Perks. and so yeah so so when it comes to since she did live in canada you know like she whenever we essentially came to the idea like maybe that chick that we talked to would be interested because that way we're in the middle of a tour we're not changing a dynamic like completely you know what i mean like it's still going to be a a girl that screams and sings you know and that's that's not going to fucking piss anyone off immediately you know what i mean so when we hit her off, we were like on a two day off kind of stint and we were like, dude, how would you feel about coming and filling in for us, you know, for the rest of the tour? And she was like, let give me like four hours to think about it. And she's like, and I'll get, I'll hit you back. And then like four hours later, she's like, all right, I guess I'm going to jump on a plane. So then she flew out, met us where we were at and then pretty much started going over songs just in the i think in the in the bus at the time just like listening to tracks on the headphones and was like guess we'll see how this goes because we I, rem I remember we even like went to uh we went to kevin lyman and we're like so we have someone new and she's going to be doing vocals for us but like we don't have nowhere to practice or any means of it is there any way we could just use a stage before the the warp tour opens and they were like we would love to help you but it's just impossible to do mm -hmm. so then we just had to like do it live every day and I, I remember there was a point in time where i was like playing and i was like god this sucks day two playing ah this sucks and then eventually like day five i'm like oh shit she's starting to sound good and then like a week, maybe a week and a half later, I was like, all right, we're back. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we're playing the set at the full capacity. You know what I mean? So it was a it was a really tough week, to say the least, <laughs> to try and jump into a new vocalist on Warp Tour. Is it weird? I, you said you always wanted to do vocals, but then kind of got thrown into guitar and then bass. Is it right. weird to now finally full time as a vocalist or is it kind of something that you've always wanted and now it's happening? Um, I mean, it's always, it's something I've always wanted, but like, I guess it's the type of thing where I had a lot of people that would always be like, nah, I don't know. I don't know your vocal style. I don't know if your vocal style is like, w would be, you know, the best or, or people would pay attention. And I was like, fuck you. I want to do it anyway. <laughs> Hell you know? yeah. Like, yeah. Hell so. yeah. 
So I mean, I would, I would definitely rip off some fucking back backing screams and shit, you know, whenever I was in Iwabo and stuff. But now it was like now that I was fucking not in a band, not doing anything for a while, I was like, I might as well give it a shot and just see if it's fun. And and I think I think part of the reason too is like if I'm going to do it, I really need to buckle down and fucking try hard and fucking get into it. You know what I mean? And part of that was always stifled by trying to play bass more. You know what I mean? So let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and jam uh, a Phantom Figures track. Cause I know that's kind of like what your full time is right now. Is there a particular song you'd want us to jam? Uh, I mean, year of our demise is like the funnest one. So before I play it, did you bring hot sauce? I didn't bring hot sauce, but I do have a shit ton of hot sauce. <laughs> I have a shit ton of hot sauce in the kitchen right now. Okay, so okay. I, if you're down to go get some hot sauce, I would like to do some trivia before uh, before we let you go. Uh, but the thing about the trivia is you get to pick the topic. What movie or TV show, Mike, have you seen the most? Or if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, because you've seen it so many times, right. you will not get stumped. Shit. I mean, that's hard to, you know, just, like, pop off. And, because, like, even one of... <laughs> even the, my favorite movie of all time, I claim, is Goonies. But the last time I watched that movie even was, like, a year or two ago, you know? So, I guess we could say Goonies. Just okay, because, I'll, I'll uh, roll Goonies. Yeah, yeah. I'll roll the Goonies. Give me a yeah. second to uh, to look up some trivia, and let's jam Phantom Figures. Guys, if you're feeling it, please support him. Hit the follow button. Year of Our Demise. All right, I think this is kind of an easy one, but uh, let's see if we can stump you. Here we go. In the Goonies, what do the villains threaten to use to harm Chunk? In the abandoned building, they used an odd object. Was it a blender? That is correct! Yeah, hell yeah. Yes, so I am doing the hot sauce. Also, Phantom Figures got a lot of likes right now. So we're putting you guys on. And it's hydrate, and that one's whack. So I'm gonna do that. Just means drink water, and that's never fun. So we're just gonna spin it again. I'm gonna try this uh, New Delhi cayenne pepper. And JB, go ahead and hit him with another question. Mike, you ever done a shoey? You ever done a shoey? First of all, what's up? Have you ever done a shoey on your many tour adventures? Did you ever make it to New Zealand or Australia? Uh, we made it to Australia. Did Did you ever encounter doing a shoey while you were over there? Is a sh Is a shoey like filling your fucking shoe up with beer or something and In chugging fact, it? Hey, yes, sir. It is. <laughs> so that's what it landed on. I've done it so many times that I had to throw away the shoe. It just stunk. So now I use a <laughs> I use a sandal which has a nice coating on it. Can the, no damage can be done. JB, uh, go ahead and ask Mike another question. We'll do a couple more and then we'll let you go, sir. But uh, I'm gonna consume the sauce because I could not stump you. Whoa. Yo, my my Yo, last uh, question for you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, my bad. I didn't want to cut you off. No, uh, I I mean I'm down to hang around for a while. How long do you guys usually do this? So we we uh, we only have you as our guest today. And it's a three-hour show, but we have about, we have, let's see, 31 requests waiting in the queue of people that want us to hear it play their song. So what we do is we, oh, we, we, we okay. play music. It doesn't matter what genre. And the chat chat will tell us, like, we ask them to type yay in the chat if they're feeling the song. If a lot okay. of people type yay, just like they did for your band Phantom Figures, we add mm -hmm. them to this list right here. At the end of the right. show, I make a poll, and I put it in chat, and everyone gets three votes to vote on their favorite and whoever wins gets put in a tournament, which I'll explain more in a minute. But uh, basically, we play a second song from that artist. <laughs> if you make a tournament, it kind of looks something like this right here, which you can see on the screen. Um, all This particular one is, is the culmination of 16 previous tournaments, of which a winner, each one is a winner of those. So hopefully we can get Phantom Figures into 
uh, the next tournament in January, and, and you guys can uh, can win, and then we can tag you on a gazillion times and a bunch of stuff, and hopefully get yeah. some more fans and listeners. That's kind of like the process of how it works. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, all, but so I have been working on some new music. I will tell you this. Uh, so the original guitarist of Phantom Figures, he's been too busy, but my friend Donnie joined in. He's been writing more modern sounding stuff. And we have been working on some stuff. And I ha- and I just finished one of the demos up. So I don't know if y'all wanted to hear. Yes, please. I, I would love to show it off. Because... <laughs> so fast. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. Just Where message I... message it to me. And uh, while while we're queuing it up, I'll jam one more song. Let's do let's do Hero of the Week. That sounds cool. All right. Hero of the Week. Yeah! Oh, yeah, that's nasty right there. That's good stuff. That's nasty. I have it ready to go. Do you want to set this track up? I know you said it was kind of like something that's been the new music has been the works. Is there anything else you want yeah. to say before I play it? So, my, like I said, my friend Donnie, he's been uh, go check him out. I think uh, his his fucking what's what's the fucking Chinese uh, <laughs> uh, social media site? What's it called? Ding uh, dong. BB. TikTok. TikTok. Oh. <laughs> TikTok. Anyways, shock. I think it's Shaka Bra. He has been writing a lot of music and he was like, yo, when are you putting out new stuff? And I was like, I don't know, man. I don't really have a guitarist at the moment. Or, yeah. I th- well, I think he joined up whenever the other guitar, before the other guy kind of just got too busy. But he's been writing a lot of modern shit, you know? So he was like, let me write some shit for you. And we joined up and I pretty much just got done with one of the demos today. And this is what you're going to hear. So let's check it out right right now. Here we go. Is that is that going to be under some like a new project, essentially? I mean, it's still going to be Phantom Figures, but we're definitely working on, you know, a little modified sound, a little newer style. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like those. I like those like 808 hits in the beginning. Oh, Oh, yeah. I mean, I. I feel like the EP we put out as Phantom Figures it has like that old Iwabo taste, and like this stuff we've been working on has a more modern, modern feel. You know what I mean? So, Mike, we only have time yeah. for a couple more questions. I'm gonna rattle off one. I'm gonna let JB ask one final, and then I have a serious question for you at the end. I want you before I send it to JB, give me the absolute worst show I wrestled ever played. Everything went wrong, but you can't say one of the early Courtney ones because we already talked about that. So everything went wrong at this particular show to the point of where you guys basically almost decided to walk off stage. Uh, so I'm pretty sure we played in Chicago one time. Uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't remember where the fucking venue, but it was like the fucking subway. You could, it was overhead. It's like a tucked away in a corner. It's like super ghetto venue, but, you know, like lots of the tightest venues were ghetto back in the day. You know, I always said that, like the tightest venue like that you could go to is like somewhere that you are afraid to piss at, uh, afraid to take a shit. You know what I mean? Like you're like, this is the sickest place I've ever been to. Definitely won't shit here, though. But (laughs) yeah, we were we were playing uh, we were playing a show and it was so (laughs) hot. It was so hot in the fucking building that all of our fucking instruments stopped working like our samples were the first thing to stop working and we were like yeah we're gonna try and make it without our samples and then our our guitar heads started oh they it was when we first first started using like axe effects and none of our shit would work because it was so hot in the building and then we were playing on the tour i'm pretty sure it was dillinger was the headliner but animals as leaders were also there and they also only got like halfway through their set because all of their axe effects stopped working because it was so fucking hot so dang what a bummer uh really quick chat wants to know uh, how would somebody go about contacting you if they want to hire you for your services regarding getting you as a feature or vice versa or something along the lines um you could hit me up at nerding out with rickshaw at gmail.com and i'm i'm open to fucking doing anything i'm always down to be on a podcast or on a youtube or anything like that hell yeah jb final question for mike <clears throat> my final question is like say if you know one day life was like hey you can't do music anymore what would you go and start doing um 
so if I 100% wasn't going to be doing music anymore and like, does that kind of have to do, like, would you say that the YouTube, the podcast would be done too? Like, like just hypothetically, that's all done. That's all out the yeah. window. Yeah. Everything okay. that you're doing currently. Okay. So if I could not do those things anymore, uh, there was a point in time where I was writing a lot and I also, uh, used to do a lot of comic book art. So my dream, even, even now, as I do all this other stuff is whenever I am completely done with music and stuff like that, I want to turn a book that I wrote into a graphic novel and I would love to do most of the art for it. But when you work a normal job and you try to do music and you try to do your YouTube and all that shit, it's just too much fucking work and drawing. I remember sitting down. I, it's okay. So the book that I wrote is 350 pages and I was like, I want to turn this into a graphic novel one day. And I started practicing my art and then I sat down and draw, I drew the first page and it took me like a fucking week. And I was like, fuck this. <laughs> I was like, maybe if I retire from fucking everything, I'll sit down and draw my ass off. But trying to fucking draw a page of art that that matches a fucking comic book that you wrote, it's just it will take a long fucking time. Because nobody thinks about like, I could rip a fucking action picture pretty hard. But whenever you got like someone standing there talking and you have to draw them over and over and over just standing there doing different gestures you're like fuck this dude this sucks <laughs> yeah just like t -t 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 -t. yeah yeah <laughs> to, to create the movements i totally get it <laughs> yeah. uh mike we appreciate you being on the show man this is the final question that we have time for unfortunately though i feel like i could sit here for like another two hours and just pick your brain uh thank you so much for doing this but i, I i'm curious we had we had kevin lyman on the show i don't know probably over a year ago but of all the interactions you've had with him what is the best piece of advice kevin ever ever gave you or the band um honestly he i don't know he was he was always saying wise shit you know what i mean like he's, he's like man. the type of he's the type of guy that like he, you don't even get to joke with that guy <laughs> it's like there's times we'd see him at these after parties for Warp Tour, and he's still all business. He's still all he's he's still talking. It's like fucking talking to Yoda or some shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so I mean, the one thing that was crazy was there was a point in time where Krista didn't couldn't play a show when we were on Warp Tour. She was like, she was like sick, right? And then he ended up having this conversation with us. We all sat around and talked and he was like, he's like, Hey, I know that you were sick, but like, is this something that you want to do forever? And then Krista was like, yeah, well definitely. Why would I not? And he's like, okay, well like, it's just the type of thing. Like if you're on tour and you're getting sick enough to where like, you're literally dropping out of shows and your band is still doing it. Like he was like, you need to think about how that affects everyone. And then he was like, so everyone, same question. Is this what you want to do? And it kind of just like was, I was kind of like, does this guy know something that we don't? And then that was like, I swear, like it was like two weeks before Krista quit the band. Wow. So I, I was just like, this man is so fucking, he's, he's just seen watching. it a hundred times. Yeah. So he, had, he <laughs> yeah. felt the vibes. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, dude, this guy is so fucking wise that he predicted her fucking leaving the band. So I, I, that's one of the wisest moments I've, I've seen from him. Mike, go ahead one time, plug anything you'd like, sir. And thank you once again. We really appreciate this. I appreciate y'all. Um, so I just want to say Phantom Figures. Yes, we. I've been putting... A good amount of time into that anybody who wants to listen to phantom figures music please support we have merch we have a merch store uh also go to the you know the spotify give us a follow jam our shit every now and then just you know just see if you like it also nerding out with rickshaw i've been putting a little more time into that it's a youtube it's also on a bunch of audio podcast apps uh you know me and some friends we talk about music we talk about nerd shit uh we sometimes 
do reaction videos and we only have like 1.8 thousand followers you know what i mean and so i put a lot of time into it for not that many followers so please hit us up also i have a story about that before i go i did a reaction we did a reaction video to bob and bev do you guys know who that is Mm -mm. okay so bob and bev this is fucking free you know this is free for them you know what i mean they get fucking publicity out of this bob and bev are like 65 year old biker biker a biker couple and they fucking do karaoke to to a bunch of songs like they do like some lincoln park songs they do some disturbed songs right they have a uh they have a YouTube. It has like sixty nine thousand subscribes, right? Me and my buddy on my YouTube did a reaction video. They hit us with a strike. Oh man, I've only gotten one strike out of almost five thousand reactions. But dang, you can get three, yeah. and they go away after yeah. ninety days. But right. dang, that is the worst. See this, and and that is the worst because get this. Okay, so when you're doing a reaction video, you're kind of borrowing somebody else's music just so you can react, just so you could do your own thing. How the fuck are you going to call us out when you're a karaoke right. couple? <laughs> like, Yo, like for you, real. Like, I was, like, mind-fucking-blown about this. It's like we could react to, like, fucking the most popular shit on the internet we could pop we could fucking do guardians of the galaxy right trailer and not get hit with anything but we do a karaoke couple and they hit us with a strike and i even you know hit him up and was like hey please reconsider blah blah, blah. heard nothing fuck those people dude so don't <laughs> sub to, to bob and bev is what you're saying I, exactly <laughs> but if you get a chance to watch it, it is so fucking bad that it's amazing. Okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Mike, we appreciate your time, man. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. And uh, we, we definitely got to get you back on the show to talk some more in the near future, please. I would love to come on the show whenever you want to have me because, you know, I didn't even get to rip my fucking bong. Let's do it. Y'all. Let's <laughs> do it right now. I'll, I'll pack <laughs> it up. Right JB, JB, let's pack it up. Let's pack it up. We got to end on a high. On a high. I know. Smoke weed every day. Is that a bong chino? It is. It's a little Starbucks vent. It's a that's a tall. It's tall right there. It looks it looks like an icy kind of. You know, you know the icy uh like you got uh, at the convenience true? store with the polar bear. It's got some use out of it. That's what I see. It's got some use. Yeah. It, well, I'm, I have this problem not cleaning my fucking shit. You know. <laughs> Mine's <laughs> dirty too. No worries. <laughs> Cheers, sir. Right. Let's Here's do it. Buddy. Hell yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Martin of Phantom Figures, and I wrestled a bear once! Give me a hell yeah! And nerding out with Rickshaw. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Have an excellent Thank day. So we appreciate much. it. Yeah, Phantom Figures. Woo! Nerding out with Rickshaw. Yeah! yeah. Pennsylvania is Traverse the Abyss. For fans of Lamb of God, The Devil Wears Prada, and Chelsea Grin. All social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord. You can find our music just about everywhere on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, and more. Stop by TraverseTheAbyss.com for our merch.